Hello, thank you for joining me. Apologies for the weird and suboptimal angle, but videography is actually hard, and it's even harder if you live in a shoebox. Anyways, what I want to do today is uh, to give you an introduction into home etching of copper, specifically PCBs, so you know, like printed circuit boards, and I'm not an expert, and this is just the way that I'm currently doing that, and I had a person actually ask me, like, how does it work, so I guess there will be at least one person that perhaps may hopefully enjoy it. So, to start off, first of all, you need a PCB, I mean, without this, the rest doesn't really do anything, and yeah, I'm using a thermo transfer method, which is cheap, accessible, like as long as you have an access to a, a laser printer, you can buy like a laminated paper that you print on and then you iron it or you know, like if you have a press, you just press it like pressure and temperature and just transfers the toner. Now, you know, the design, etc. I mean, you would usually do printed circuit boards, but hey, I mean, whatever you want. I'm actually trying to make like nameplates or maker's mark and this was my basically first idea and I haven't been doing PCB etching in like a decade so it's also fun to get back to stuff that I used to do basically so yeah first of all your PCB well your board or whatever you want to etch I mean I don't judge as long as it's copper the next thing is an etching agent so basically you have two choices, one is sodium persulfate, which I have here, the other is ferric chloride. And if you don't know what ferric chloride is, you don't want to know at this point, I mean it makes no point, it's, it's more difficult to handle without, you know, like, doing harm to yourself and everyone around, so just get this. And you know, this is actually like sold as an etching agent. Because you can also buy it as a proper chemical uh, reagent, which I also do have, but this is like half the price. And that's at this, I would say, end of scale for like retail, it's like one kilogram, so like slightly over two pounds. And this is gonna last quite a bit of time. So yeah, go with sodium persulfate, it will be good enough, forget about the ferric chloride for now. Now the next thing you need is some containment device and basically you know it has to hold your PCB like physically and I would say you want something where you could also pour like let's say at least 200 milliliters of water and you know in terms of materials glass is obviously the easiest and safest choice if you don't have anything glass like which would be weird I guess plastics but again I'm not an expert I would just assume as this comes in like a HDPE box, so like polyethylene, polypropylene, a tray or something will probably be fine. Of course, this is, you know, like eating metals, so anything out of like brass or copper, it's, uh, yeah, it's not a good idea. I mean, unless you want to destroy it and make a mess. So yeah, some sort of a dish or tray, I think is the second needed thing. Then you want another container where you will, like, where it's easy to actually measure how much water you've poured in. I mean, a beaker is obviously designed for that, but an ordinary glass will suffice. And yeah, I think it should be glass, or like, just like this, because you're gonna need to mix this with water before you actually put it in. Uh, so yeah, separate container for water. A measure would be immensely helpful for that. Now the next thing, and maybe this is, well, you can, you know, like, it's not strictly necessary, I mean, it's like the way I do it, is I actually have like a jeweler's uh, scale, so I can measure, you know, like another beaker, like a baby one, cause, so I can measure quite accurately, or actually like overkill accurately, how much of this stuff I'm putting in. So, for this, like, I think similar, but unless this is not mixed with water, I don't think it's going to be highly reactive, you're not touching it with your fingers or like bare copper stuff, so... But still, I mean, you would probably want to have some way of measure the powder and you know, like a gram scale is enough, you don't have to go like a hundred of a gram as this does, I mean, it's an overkill. Uh, and you don't have to like use it and I think this 
hopefully it will be obvious why in a bit. And yeah, some, you know, like device to actually get it in a controlled manner so we can measure it if you're measuring it. But in any case, I mean, doing that is highly not recommended. You're just gonna go like make a mess and maybe hurt yourself in the process. So basically the idea is that now, how much of this stuff do you need? So at least this manufacturer is very helpful because they tell you that a kilogram of this, so exactly like the whole contents of this box will react with 270 grams of copper, which is nice, but the problem is I have no idea how much copper is in here, like in grams or whatever. And I don't think I have ever seen any PCB seller actually telling you how much there is. So from my perspective, that's like trial and error. And for this size of a PCB board, I would say 200 milliliters of water. And yeah, I mean, like, so how much do you need? So the way I'm going with that is that I just want all of this to dissolve in the water. And you can check it on Wikipedia. I think it's like more or less, or, you know, like it's good enough to basically say 100 milliliters of water, 22 grams of this stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, and that's the point. I mean, if you want to be as efficient as possible, like economically, then you would measure it exactly. But you know, a simpler way is just, you know, like pour however much water you want and start adding it, stir it, and just stop when it stops dissolving. I mean, it's like, it's like salt at this point or, or sugar or any other thing you want to dissolve. So yeah, I mean, you basically get like hot tap water. It's supposed to be, you know, like when you read on the internet, it's like between 40 and 50 degrees centigrade. Uh, you know, like if it's not cold, I mean, if it's, even if it's cold, it's going to work. It's just going to be slower. So no, there's always a trade-off. So basically hot water, your measured amount, you put it in, you stir it in, pour that here, and then you wait. That's, that's the main part of the thing. I mean, you can jiggle it a bit, just be careful not to spill uh, this stuff around. I mean, when it's wet, actually, you know, like a solution, that's when it's actually like actually re properly reactive. So just, you know, like exercise caution. And I think this is like, with my approach, 200 milliliters, this is going to be done in like maybe 20 minutes. I mean, we'll see, cause I'm not gonna record that cause that's too much hassle, but I'll probably add a segment at the end of this, like with the results. Now, what else? And yeah, I mean, as the sulfate is actually like eating the copper, it's forming what I assume, again, not an expert, copper sulfates, which have this beautiful, beautiful blue sky color. Now, as it's doing that and as it's done, do not assume that it's not reactive. <laughs> it's still reactive, it will still eat other metal as I mean it's the galvanic series so like some very rapidly some not really but you should still treat it you know like as a chemical waste and you know like if you have access to a proper disposal facility then you know uh, thumbs up and you know just do that I mean from my perspective if you live in a big city and are connected to a proper sewage system then you know just hypothetically speaking if you were to just pour it down the drain I mean, there's already much more, much nastier stuff there. So I don't think that will be a problem. But again, please check your local laws and regu regulations. Maybe you live in a place where there's like a sewage police. So, you know, I'm not responsible for anything like that. Just, you know, know what you're doing. That's, that's really useful generally in life. So yeah, it's, um, it's pretty simple, pretty clean. Compared to this other stuff, this is relatively timid it won't you know like blow up blow you up or anything like that so yeah uh, if anything else I mean you know it's all like it's more like cooking it's not like exact science I mean 200 milliliters if you go like five more or five less I mean what's the worst case you will just probably waste some of this stuff because it won't dissolve but it will be wet so you can't really do much with it and the other, like, what can go wrong, I mean, you will not have enough of this to actually add all of the copper, but you don't have to do it, like, in one go. If you're, like, budget constrained, then probably start, like, with, and you don't know how much actually, like, how much copper there is. 
just start with smaller amounts like 50 milliliters or 100 like a smaller container and just see how it goes I mean you can do it multiple times it won't complain so so yeah hope that was helpful or useful or anything like that and I'll probably show you the results because yeah I'm not gonna be doing all the stuff on camera anyways thank you yeah and there you told your dear audience that you're not gonna be recording that but then you think to yourself you already have the camera out I mean why not you can always not include the segment so hey stop talking start doing Hmm. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to turn off the fan. I mean, you specifically do not want to be breathing this stuff in. Okay. See this? No good. No, oh well. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I can see it going with the air currents I mean again these are like I don't do it often enough and it's not enough in terms of quantity to like be really worried I mean I'm not working at factory all this stuff or like handling pallets of it or how do you even I don't know with what kind what kind of an industrial container will be getting this in okay we're getting close I'm aiming for 44 Good enough Well, I guess I, at least it's good that I'm up wind air currents. So yeah, not breathing that in. Right here, time to go to the kitchen. Yeah, I have been wrong. It's been 21 minutes. So yeah, I guess this will take more than one pass. But at the very least, Maybe you can see the beautiful blue color. Mm, this is very nice. Well, it would be nicer if it actually at least started to show some of the base plate material. But hey, as I said, trial and error. All right, believe it or not, it's still the same day, just a bit later, and we're done. And the results are good enough. Now, my estimate, well, it wasn't correct. It took, I think, about an hour to actually get to this point. So, you know, like, underestimated by a factor of three. But it's not wasted or it wasn't wasted because I had an idea, you know, something that's in hindsight super obvious, but I have, like, it never crossed my mind before. So, I've done it twice. I've added hot tap water. I think the first time was after, like, 20-30 minutes, you know, when it was supposed to be done by my initial estimate. You know, really hot tap water, 100 milliliters of it, and it seemed to speed it up. 
but yeah, not enough. So then again, I still had some room left, so another like 50 milliliters of really hot tap water, and an hour, and we got here. So yeah, mission accomplished. Took longer than expected, kind of as as usual. In any case, yeah, I mean it's kind of dumb, you know, chemical reactions, temperature, very very important. So you may know or don't know, but you know in laboratories and medical places you have those hot plates that actually keep stuff at temperature for reasons like this. So I'm planning, well I'm actually kind of trying to address that. The funny thing is that the ones that are actually lab grade are pretty expensive, like in thousands of dollars, you know, I guess, I hope. At least they are certified or calibrated, etc. etc. But, anyways, as usual, you know, China, thanks everyone for China. So, I've managed to find something that's much, much cheaper, also simpler, and I'm not expecting much out of it. But I will certainly try. And we'll see, we'll see. Hopefully, it will work well enough to be good enough. So, we put it that way. In any case, I think we're done for today. And it's actually still today, hooray! So, hope you've enjoyed, and thank you for watching. See you next time!